It's the 1st of August. It's a bit of a dull start. Hello. I'm Ray. This is my vegetable garden. And if you're new to my channel, then please subscribe. So today is the 1st of August. And we're going to give you a quick tour. It's around 6 o'clock in the morning. And we're going to get round quickly before the sun comes up. Yesterday it was about the third hottest day ever recorded in the UK and the polytunnel is far too hot to be in. So we're going to give a quick tour and then we're going to work. So we'll see you soon. Let me show you what we've got growing on our vegetable garden. Cheers! We're going to start with the flower bed and the lupins have brought out another flower. So it's about the third flower. The sunflowers, they're dying off now. And the rose, they're looking good. And we've got a passion fruit growing up the gate. And as we can see, it's reached the top of the gate. So now, I'm not quite sure where that's going to go. But that is for our competition for the first passion flute to flower on our plot and the more sunflowers these are the sunflowers I did in a pot for Nick's sunflower challenge and they didn't get ready at all So this is our first bed and we've got marigolds and we've got some more sunflowers they were recently sowed three weeks ago and these are like a harlequin mix then we've got leeks and then we've got some swedes then we have our tomatoes And we've got the tomato cages. These are growing quite well. These were only planted about three weeks ago. We've got some random cabbage. A line of carrots. It's a couple of parsnips tucked in here and then we just pulled up the beetroot for making some beetroot cake alderman peas getting a bit ropey now but they have shot up some more roots recently some more shoots and we have got a few more extra peas we thought these were all done but now we're getting a few more. So the tomatoes alongside the tunnel are doing really good. And this was an experiment whether they were going to be in a pot, a little pot or no pot. And to be honest, it's made no difference. Looking inside the Nested tunnel is the cauliflowers and they're probably four foot tall now. They're growing really well in there. The Brussels sprouts. One thing I have noticed though is that a couple of my fruits have been eaten. So the sprouts in the tunnel have been such a good success, we can't even open the door. But at least we can see sprouts are forming. 
So looking in the sand pit, we've got some sweet williams just peeping through now. And then we can look at west. We've got some spare celery. These are some wallflowers. These are some cuttings from petunias we took. And more cuttings of petunias. And this is the lavenders that we took. Lavender and something else. This is more petunias. We can take some more cuttings from this plant. And probably this one too. So we can get a few more. So this is the bean bed. Hello my beans, beans. So many beans. And these beans are quite interesting. Purple ones. These were grown with the perlite and the vermiculite experiment. And they're looking really nice and quite unusual. But we don't need that many beans. So the brassica bed, we have more sprouts. This was done an hour as we got three beds of sprouts. But as we can see these have really outgrown the cover. And I don't wish to take off the cover again because if I do it's not going to go back on again. And then we got a last planting of broccoli and some more cabbage. And then the final bed of sprouts. And these are not as tall, these were sown a bit later. But they're bursting out. The lavender is lovely. The bees are absolutely crazy on it. It's too early this morning, the bees are all asleep. And the next bed We've got some carrots and we've got our tomatoes in the Ringo's outside. This was an experiment. I don't know really what it shows, but Ringo's are not really needed outside. They would just grow anyway. So this is our table. We have a few bits left on there, some broccoli, some cows, we've got some wallflowers, we've got two passion fruits and the fuchsia and the petunia in the strawberry tub. Just pulled up these onions, these are out to dry. And some homegrown fuchsias. Strawberry bed, we intend to move the strawberry bed next year. It's going to be here, but it's going to be in a raised bed. And after the issues with courgettes, we've let us grow. So we haven't harvested any more of this, and it's grown into a monster. So the tomato tower is doing quite well. This has got a bucket. In the bottom, I'll put a link of how we made it and the waters, the roots through the holes at the bottom of the bucket. So these are growing good now. These are not being pruned and there's tomatoes forming now. This is the pond. And if you're regular to my channel, we will see the pond is too high, but eventually the pond will move across to this bed and this will be a flower bed for next year. And this will be another bed for, for growing in. The strawberries at the back there will be removed. But look at these dahlias. Absolutely lovely. 
Cosmos and we just stuck in some peas that we bought from the DIY store for 50p trying to get an extra lot of peas in before the end of the season some more sunflowers and more sunflowers at the back we planted nasturtiums at the back and these were supposed to be a climbing one and they were supposed to have climbed up the sunflowers but that hasn't happened but we're really pleased with these dahlias So these are 20p tomatoes we bought and to be honest they haven't really been looked after too much but we have put the black ones in the two pots so it'd be interesting to see the black cherry tomatoes celery in the bed is going well and we've got some poppies growing here. The tomatoes in the mayonnaise jars, they need a good prune and that'd be a job for Tuesday, Tomato Tuesdays. And this is the flower bed on the end of my polytunnel. And as we can see the cosmos has just gone nuts. It's actually taking away a lot of the light and the nasturtiums died off. The other bed in front of my polytunnel is disappointing. I had corn but some critters has been and stripped the corn. Now that is annoying. Oh well. So I have a question. I, my neighbours bought down these boards and although they got lights in, I don't think I'll be using the lights. But my question is, do you think that looks good as a border all the way down? And also, my beds go this way. What do you think about turning them this way? So they will run down the boards. Let me know in the comments. This is facing north. This is east. This is south. And this is west. So what do you think? My plan is beds all the way down in a straight line following this line. Let me know what you think. I do actually like the way that this looks nice and tidy now it's edged off but the grass and the weeds do grow so what do you think? I think I should leave it as it is and follow this plan all the way down I'd be interested to hear and maybe the view from the subscribers will encourage me to do that so maybe we'll have a go whoever suggests the amount of options we'll go with that so a quick rundown as the beds are emptying now this is the Vegemon bed and we've got the potatoes still there the chard, some beetroot, some beans, runner beans, French beans and some radish at the back. The next bed along is the giant cabbage and this is not Eric, Eric is this way. And then we've got a broccoli, I'm going to get a last planting of broccoli and we've got leeks and a few tomatoes 
in the uh, caves there. The last bed is the squash bed, but this is not doing well. This was fairly fresh manure laid on top. It was supposed to have been it's been covered with cardboard. And it was supposed to have been covered with compost at the beginning of the year, but with all the lockdown business, that never got done. So this is some squashes, and we do have a squash growing in there. But there's a pumpkin behind the squash, another pumpkin at the back. This is butternut squash, and these are blue squashes. So as you can see, none of them have done that great. On the beds at the back, they haven't been used this year. These were all going to be filled up in March, but uh, during the lockdown, we've not been able to. We have obtained this wooden box, and this is going to be our new strawberry bed. And that's going to go next to the patio. So we can easily pin, pick up our uh, strawberries without them being on the floor. So all these beds underneath the box have been filled with manure. And this is some more manure to fill these beds. And eventually, by the end of winter, all these beds will be filled, ready for next summer. So this is the worst part of the garden. And we've got a few onions in here, and we were strimming it yesterday, but the strimmer wire broke, and as it wasn't my strimmer, I wasn't sure how to mend the strimmer. So, it's as it is. This is some broccoli that's been, been taken. As you can see, the heads have been taken. And this is some marrows that we planted that never done nothing. Over here we've got some more broccoli and kale which is all ready now. In the next bed which is full of weeds is cauliflowers. We're leaving that settled so we don't disturb them but we will check it this week to see if we've got any cauliflowers. The rose that we pruned is coming out marvellous now and the smells are lovely. There's a video of how we pruned our rose and it sure benefited from that prune and the smells, hmm, they're so nice, so nice. This is our bench, this is some strawberries that we potted up for the runners and this is just mainly for spares, a few bits, it's an old sunflower, some old bits and pieces, that, some rosemary cuttings there, some carnations, some straw, uh, tomatoes planted in water some chard and this is some more fuchsias that we grew from seed and they're coming out good and some lupins so this year we made these beds down this side of the tunnel and it's been quite useful although it has got a bit messy and we've got a few bits in here. These are our leeks in the bucket. And we've got butternut squash in the bucket, which is growing up the fence. 
have parsnips in a bucket, carrots, more carrots in a bucket, and another butternut squash in a bucket. And this is growing up the trellis, and we're getting some fruits. And then we've got remaining potatoes. This is our pumpkins. And as we can see on this one, it's growing crazy. But over the last couple of days, we've got all the white powdery mildew on the plants. But these are exactly the same as the pumpkins on the other side. And we have a big pumpkin. So we've got one plant going this way. And then down the end, we've got another plant coming this way. So it's crazy. Just two sides of the tunnel. We've got different results. Well, I'm pleased with that. So let's have a look in the polytunnel. And we have nice success. So we've just pruned all our tomatoes last Tuesday. I've only just come up now. So I'm just having a look for the first time. So in the middle we got cucumber melons and we've got all our hanging tomato toppler. This is not bad work really, it's not doing too bad. And then all our hanging tomatoes. Tomatoes are doing well, but I can see that we're also getting some nibbled. Last year, around August, a lot of ours got eaten. So these are sun gold tomatoes we planted. We got these for 20p. And these are some mini cucumbers we got for 50p. So in here, we're doing more vertical gardening with beans coming up the middle. More beans. We've got French beans in the middle here. The purple beans, and then we got cucumbers growing up the trellis. And we've got so many cucumbers, it's crazy. Some more tomatoes on the right, and these are my favourite alicante. They just look so perfect and so nice. These are marmalade, which is a beef potato, beef tomato. But they're looking good. We have brassicas in the middle. We've got Cavaliero Nero, some cauliflowers, kale, and then we've got our winter flowers. These are Chinese lanterns. We've got hollyhock. These are looking a bit dry. These need a water before I go home. So we've got pansies, delphiniums, and wildflowers. We've got a few peppers that are just remaining. And we've tried to sow a few more peas. So we love our alderman peas. More tomatoes. And these are two cucumbers. We've got two lemon cucumbers. And these were sown in the compost in the wheelbarrow. And I'll add a link above and two apple cucumbers. So we need to make a trestle or ropes for these to tie up on. In this bed, we've got parsnips and they're growing in sand and compost and they're going really tall. So we need to have a look at them. 
going through the middle of the tomatoes we put carrots and the carrots are slightly covering the tomato plants but we did pull up some carrots under the little tiny triangular ones and the basil we also did in between we put radishes in one of these gaps also we did pepper and chilies in between and look at this one these are doing good these are a pepper chilli they're really doing good and we've got black peppers in here so that's good all these are peppers and they're coming on well too on the top shelf of our seed trays is our Christmas potatoes and these are charlotte and we've got some more charlotte potatoes and they're out to check don't need to check but they are and we've got some remaining broccolis remaining leeks We've got some more cucumbers, this is the ornamental cabbage we're growing. Two one pea out of a tray of those, that I think we just had a real dud batch of peas. And we've got cucumbers growing in the pot which will eventually grow up to here and we're going to grow them along the shelf. On the back of the fence we have a butternut squash which is going quite tall and this needs to be tied in. And then we've got a hanging basket of normal tomatoes which is a bit random but we like random. At the bottom we've got our tomatoes. These were planted in the compost of the potatoes. They're doing okay. We've got a couple of potato pots left. On the right hand side, this is our melons. And we took three big melons off the bottom here and they were absolutely gorgeous. We've got one melon left growing on the vine. But I did weed the back of these melons and I think I possibly disturbed some of the roots as they're all pretty much dying off now so that's a shame but we learn and next year's trellis will be different from this year the next bit along is our watermelons and we so underestimated the space that watermelons needed and we're growing them up the trellis but at the present we can't see any watermelons as such yet. If we look in this side of the trellis we planted some okra and now we do actually have okra growing which is very pleasing so here is our cucumber trellis and we've been pruning this and taking the cucumbers off but there's so many so many and we go back to our melons another lot of melons and we've got another little melon here another one hiding in here so that's another two so these will need a bit of support but they're growing good really nice we have more cucumbers 
crazy. Last year, cucumbers was really rubbish. We did them in pots. Now this year, they've gone absolutely mad. And last in our polytunnel, not quite last, but we've got some chilies. And these are doing okay. That's our chilies. And we did throw a few runner beans in the mix and see what they can do. We want to try peas in the tunnel. So we put a few alderman peas in. Now they, they have grown, but they've dried quite quickly in here. And then lastly, on a, by the door of the polytunnel, doing a complete circle, is our grapevine. And this has grown all the way tall. And now it's reached the roof of the tunnel. And now I'm not really sure where we're going to take this. Whether we take it right down the middle pole. I'm not sure I really want to do that. So I'm not so sure. I'm not so sure it's a good idea to put it there. But we do need to take off some side shoots. And that's one of our autumn, one of our August jobs. So thank you for watching and it was a quick tour round, a lot quicker than other months. Wanted to get it done before the sun came up. So thank you very much, still lots growing, still lots of jobs to do. So check out August Jobs on our playlist. So thank you very much and if you're a new subscriber, thank you for joining. And if not, then please subscribe, ring that bell get notifications when I post some more and leave me a message. I love reading your messages and it's really good to hear from people. So thank you very much. Cheers for now. Bye.